did a brew day today and uh, my first time trying to do a bitter so uh, English bitter so I, I took a you know a standard uh, recipe um, for a special bitter out of uh, brewing classic styles and pretty much just tried to mirror that um, and yeah everything went really really well all right so here today's recipe a special bitter going pretty light on this one just using some uh, instead of the pale malt it's actually using Munton's uh, Maris Otter and, uh, typical you know, light crystal and a dark crystal some special roast and uh, for this one it's going to be all East Kent Goldens and I'll be trying out the uh, Y Yeast Labs 1469 on this one the West Yorkshire Ale uh, trying to hit a target of 1.044 and uh, hoping that will finish off uh, around 10-12 uh, but yeah that should come out if that comes out that should come out to be about 4.2% uh, very light drinker let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, mash tun Alright, so already in the mash tun, got all the grains in there, and uh, so my configuration these days is uh, coming straight out of my water supply through the carbon filter, and using the, uh, the water meter here to say I'm going to dough in, or uh, yeah, strike water is going to be uh, 24.5 liters, it's about 6.5 gallons, just under. And uh, so I'm going from the meter through the bottom of my coil, coming up through the HLT, out through the top of the coil, and into the bottom of the mash tun to underlift. We get a lot of. So let's go ahead and start to dough in. Temperatures on my. HLT, 85 degrees, well the present value is 83, that's recycling. Coming in at the bottom of the mash tun at 82. I got a flow rate here of about three and a half uh, liters per second, or three and a half liters per minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase this a little bit. Put the dial it in right around five. Now you'll see that brings down my temperature coming in at the bottom of the mash tun. Yeah, it's going to push it down into the uh, lower 60s. Even if it comes down to 50 degrees, I get a little bit of a protein rest with that. And that's okay with me. That's what I prefer. Now you can start to see the temperature on the HLP is starting to decrease. And by the time this is finished, it should end up right around where I want, around 66 Celsius. So far we've uh, just about 9 liters, just about 10 liters now, coming out almost halfway done. Again, coming through here through the bottom of the coil, up through the HLT, the coil and the HLT is in there. Out through the top, into the bottom of the mash tun, the underlet. See some of the greens starting to come up a little bit. Sure. 53 at the bottom of the mash tun. 73 in the HLP. Coming up on the 21 liters. Just about finished. Temperatures are looking good over there. Mash tun. The grain has gone over the. Uh, the probe here. Let's see, I'm in about 54. Current level nine. Here we go. Stopped at 24.5 liters. The uh, 
HLT is at 65. I'm going to turn that down because what we want today is 66. There we go. And uh, present temperature is 40, reads 45 here on this guy. But as soon as I open it up and start to recycle through the coil, this temperature, which is currently about 54, is going to rise up to 65 over about a period of 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, that's actually okay. That's, uh, that's the procedure that I prefer these days. Take a look. Starting to recirculate. Looking pretty good. Okay, so I am currently testing my mash. My mash uh, pH was initially at 5.5 after the uh, dough in, and um, I added some phosphoric acid, and uh, of course, using some buffering solution to calibrate my uh, pH meter. Now it's coming in at uh, 5.2 at uh, 23 degrees Celsius. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and keep that there. The mash has been going on now for about 30 minutes, just over 30 minutes. So that's okay. The, uh, the pH was adjusted about 15 minutes ago. I've just sort of uh, been cleaning up the uh, boil kettle, uh, cleaning up the uh, sight glass a little bit. Yeah, everything in here is looking really good. Clearing up really nicely. It looks like it's going to be a really nice uh, bitter color. Okay, so went a little bit over the mash time. Um, pretty much was uh, getting the sparge water to the right pH. And now I'm ramping up the HLT to the uh, mash out temperature. Bring it up to 75. And once it reaches that, then we'll go ahead and start the sparge and fill it with oil kettle. Okay, sparge time. Let's go ahead and hook up the cables for sparging.
Alright, come on over here and take out this, uh, check out the uh, glorious wart. That's a beautiful, beautiful color. Beautiful copper color. Of course, that's going to be diluted with uh, nine gallons of water, so it's going to come out to be a proper bitter, bitter color. Um, yeah, very, very nice. So the first runs comes in about 1072, 1071, 1072. You call it. Taking a pH meeting of my first run-ins, coming in at 5.25 at 20 degrees Celsius. Here we go, taking a measurement of the uh, sparge water, coming in about 5.5, a little bit higher than I'd like. I like it right at 5.50, but uh, this will be okay. So right around this time, I'm filling up the boil kettle, bringing it up to the uh, the pre-boil volume, and uh, I've got the uh, the temperature set up so that it stays at 90 degrees Celsius until I'm ready to boil, uh, until the pot you know has reached the pre-boil volume. Um, if you take a look. You know, it starts to build up some uh, scum, as they call it, some of the foam. But, yeah. So I used to worry about the foam quite a bit. Um, you'd see me in previous videos squirting water, even blowing on it, you know, in order to get the, uh, the hot break to settle down. A few months ago, I went ahead and uh, discovered Firm Cap S. So I'm using this nowadays. I've used it for the last three brews and it's really nice. Um, I'll put about five drops on a, uh, it's a 13 and a half gallon boil, you know, so I only have about a, a gallon and a half left to the rim. So uh, I'll put about five drops of this on that and uh, really the hot break is no longer such a big issue. It's just to use the spoon a little bit in order to stir it up and then it dissipates. I'll go ahead and show you that today and show you how great this stuff works. It, it's not like, you know, going to prevent everything, but uh, it does help out a lot. And here's a shot of my pH just coming out of the, uh, the hose after the charcoal filter. So 7.75. This is at uh, 15 degrees. I've let it warm up a little bit. But that's a very high pH. Well, no, it's within uh, within some norms. But um, yeah, it's a high pH, but it's got low alkalinity. Believe it or not, uh, alkalinity is only about thirty. Actually, it's about thirty-six HCO three. And uh, so the hardness has also uh, decreased a little bit. Uh, now it's uh, 15 on the calcium and about 5 on the magnesium. So, yeah. Alright, my pre-boil gravity is supposed to be 1038, I'm at 1044, so I think what I'm going to do is stop it here and uh, top it up with water. I'm at 13 gallons and I should be at 13.16 gallons, so uh, yeah, I'm a little bit over. So I'm going to go ahead and top it up with water till I get closer to my uh, intended target of 1.038. 
and uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I added about um, about a gallon of water. I got it up to 14 gallons of water in the kettle, and I don't dare go any more than that. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it right there. Now it's time to pump it up to a boil. I can do uh, post-boil uh, water additions in order to uh, you know, offset that and bring it down to my target gravity. And um, I think that's what I'm going to do today. So yeah, I didn't anticipate the, uh, the extra time it took in order to adjust the sparge water. So of course, that accounted for getting better extraction out of the grains. So yeah, so there's my uh, greater efficiency. Um, Yep, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and crank the uh, the boiler up to 100% uh, and uh, get this thing up to a boil. And now we're going to be able to see a little bit how that uh, firm cap helps out. Kind of make some uh, cracks here on the surface. I don't know if you can see that over there. Uh, it's really kind of interesting. Right about this time I run over and start to crank the uh, PID down to about 80% going to start here any second. There we go. That's it. That's uh, just about a hot break. I dialed it down to uh, 75 there really quickly. And uh, now I just cranked it back up to 80. Uh, yeah. Now we're uh, just about past hot break, so I'm going to go ahead and measure out the uh, first hop edition and get that ready. All right, here we go. First hop drop, 76 grams of East Kent Goldens. Now it's just fun time and 
clean out the mess ton. All right, 40 minutes. Time for 28 grams of East Kent Golden. So if you noticed, I was doing some cleaning there during that last minute hop drop. Uh, it's true. Taking a cue from uh, main brew guy, it's been a while since I cleaned the inside of the coil, so I figured I'd go ahead and do that again. I got about five gallons of water with PBW in there, and uh, cycling that through the pump, goes up through the coil, and then right back out the top. It's only been doing this for about five minutes now, and the water's still pretty clean, so that's good. I only ever use that pump for water, so I know there's nothing that's going to come out of there. That's alright. Alright, about 12 minutes left in the boil. Got a wort flock tablet and some yeast nutrient. Got about a minute left in the boil. Last uh, one ounce, 28 grams of East Kent Goldens. Going in. That's it. Pretty much the end of the brew day. Gonna go ahead and shut off the element. And let that steep for a couple minutes while I uh, finish hooking up the chiller and go from there. I'm gonna go ahead and let that steep for a little bit longer. Uh, just a couple minutes. Here's the, uh, the color of it at least uh, through the sight glass. Looking really nice. Get the uh, cleaning water. Still pretty clear. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the Gary. Maybe it's your pump that was dirty. Not necessarily the uh, the coil. So if you push uh, your sparge water through the coil after every brew, you know it should be clean. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and just shut that off and call it good. I'm gonna let this settle down for about. Oh, couple minutes um, and then I'm not even gonna bother to whirlpool I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go straight through the counterflow chiller into the fermenter so just gonna let some of that debris settle first all right so there we go end of the boil about 1047 I'm gonna go ahead and live with that um, it have come out to about a 4.6% beer if it attenuates down to 10, 12. And that should be okay. So here we go, coming out of the boil kettle through the pump, through the counterflow chiller, straight into the fermenter. 20 liters in this one, currently at 10 here. And uh, still filling up. Really good. So here we go, we're oxygenating the wort. I'll go ahead and dose each one of these with about a minute to a minute and a half worth of pure oxygen. And uh, then we'll add the yeast. Okay, here's me, pitching the white yeast. West Yorkshire Ale, 1469. I didn't bother making a starter with this one since it was gonna be so low. So on the ABV, so I'm kind of hoping uh, this will be just fine. I gave it plenty of oxygen, so now it's up to the yeast. Alright, here they are in the uh, basement bathroom. They'll be here in the uh, fermenter chamber for about, uh, about a week. We'll come back and check these in a week and see how the uh, gravities are doing. But yeah. So there we go. At the final result today is cracking in at about uh, 10.47. So I'm gonna call it. There's... I don't know. I think that'll be a nice special dinner. What do you think?